The analog computer that is presented and analyzed in this video is implemented using five ideal op amps and it can solve this third order programmable differential equation in which the coefficients alpha for the second derivative of v out and uh, beta for the first derivative of v out and uh, gamma uh, as, as shown here for v out are defined by these three potentiometers in the circuit as you can see here. So we can actually adjust the circuit so that it solve uh, the needed differential equation uh, depending on what coefficient we apply. Now how does this circuit work? And of course uh, VI is the input voltage to the circuit. So VI is applied here and then the circuit automatically solves the differential equation and V out reported that the output is the solution of differential equation. So it's a very interesting analog computer. Let's see how it works. Uh, to quickly analyze that, let's make the assumption that the positive negative supply voltages like plus minus 5 or plus minus 10 volt are applied. So op amps, all of them are properly biased. I also make the assumption that since the output of each op amp, as you can see, connected via feedback route to negative or inverting input terminal, op amps are properly negative feedback. Therefore, I can say for all op amps, they are um, in linear region of operation and as a result I can say that the virtual short for them is valid so they are not saturated and virtual short indicate that the voltage at positive input terminal is the same as voltage at negative input terminal which you can see that positive terminal for all op amps is grounded so therefore negative terminal is also at zero volt so zero volt and then zero volt which effectively is a virtual ground so equal to zero this is important because we're going to use it in our quick analysis. Okay, um, quickly solve the problem. I'm going to just uh, deal with this first op amp uh, right hand at the left side of the circuit. You can see that this is nothing but an inverting amplifier. So um, what, what it does, inverting amplifier here, it's as simple as just uh, basically from VI at input, it generates negative VI here because we know that uh, the gain of inverting amplifier is simply R divided by R and minus 1. So, and that's easy to see. It's just KCL or Kirchhoff current law here. So whatever current coming in should be the current that is going out. This voltage is 0. So if we have uh, plus minus VI drop here, we should have plus minus VI drop here, which translate to effectively negative VI at this node. But just uh, saying that this node, if we refer to at VX, it's, we know that Vx is just simply negative r, which is this r, and then over r, which is this r, which they have the same value, so hence I can say times Vi, and therefore as, as a result I can say Vx is simply minus Vi. Okay, so that's uh, the inverting amplifier with a gain of negative 1. So that's amplifier number 1. Uh, so gain of negative 1. All right, so negative VI appears at this node. That's what matters to me. All right, so what else do we have? We have V out uh, here, which effectively V out appears at this node here, right on the right side of this potentiometer. Okay, keep that in mind. Uh, of course, uh, on the right, on the left side of this potentiometer, I, we can see it's connected to negative terminal of the op amp number two, which is also in benefiting from virtual ground. And as a result of that, we can see that the voltage is here zero, so you have zero volt here. So there is a, basically in summary, what I'm trying to say is there is plus minus V out across this uh, potentiometer. Okay, so what else do we have? We have um, another inverting amplifier here. So let's keep this in mind as a reference. I'm going to just write it here because I'm going to use it a couple of times. For any inverting amplifier in which we have impedance let's say Z1 and then we have impedance uh, Z2 with this setup so here is the feedback or uh, whatever we refer to should not show the resistor so let's say impedance Z2 then what we're gonna get for V out versus let's say uh, so let's say V2 versus V1. So this is an inverting amplifier. And uh, expectation is 
v2 is equal to negative z2 divided by z1 times v1. So as a result, I can also say equivalently v1 is simply minus z1 over z2 and uh, times v2. So from output to input, from v2 to v1. Okay, so what is the benefit of this? Well, take a look at what we have here. This is an inverting amplifier setup. I can find the voltage here because that's exactly V1 using the same argument I presented here. So I can say V1, this voltage effectively for me at the input of an inverting amplifier is minus uh, Z1, which is this impedance, which in this case is simple R. So it's going to be minus R divided by Z2 is the feedback impedance, which in this case is the impedance for cap, which in S domain is simply 1 over Cs. Okay, so it's 1 over Cs times V2, which is the output voltage of the inverting amplifier, which is V out. So I'm going to get V out. So I just summarized that, minus RCs V out. That mod, what is mattering to me. So I'm going to just refer to this voltage as minus RCS V out. Okay, the same argument applied. See, uh, see I, uh, from, from V out via this inverting amplifier, I got to minus RCS V out. So it seems that obviously I am multiplying V out by negative RCS to get to input. As you can see, there is another instance of uh, same inverting amplifier showing up here. So if I need to go from its output to another input, I should do the same thing. I should multiply output by another instance of negative RCS. So what I get at this point is negative RCS times negative RCS times V out. So instead of writing it this way, it's just simply R square, C square, S square, V out. So allow me to write it that way. So there you go. I am going to write just R2, R squared, C squared. So R squared, C squared, S squared, and V out. That's the voltage at this node. Okay, so one uh, final thing. We have negative RCS times V out at this node, the voltage of this node. Take a look at what we have here. It's another instance of inverting amplifier. So similar to what we have discussed because the positive terminal is grounded obviously so and uh, the op amp is properly biased so it's benefit from virtual short and positive terminal is zero, negative terminal is zero. So you can see now the and uh, output connected to inverting uh, input terminal. So as a result, whatever voltage comes in, benefit from a gain to get to the output. And that gain in this scenario is simply negative R over R, uh, similar to what we discussed here, right here. So it is output voltage is negative feedback impedance divided by the first impedance in the circuit. So in this case, feedback impedance is R first impedance is R. So we get voltage at this node is equal to minus, so I'm going to write it this way, uh, I'm going to write it voltage at this node is let's say Vx or Vy, so Vy is equal to minus R divided by R times the input voltage times negative RCS V out. So obviously it become RCS V out. Okay, um, so we are all set because we now have on the right side of this potentiometer, we now have Vy on the right side and on the left side we have connection to zero volt. So basically what I'm trying to say is 
Across this potentiometer, we have just um, so zero volt. So we have plus minus V by. Okay, so what I can do as uh, the final step of this analysis, I can write a nice. I can write a nice KCL here. So let's write. Uh, let's move this zero here. So I'm going to write a KCL or Kirchhoff current law, law of preservation of current. So KCL, so law of preservation of current, Kirchhoff current law, says the sum of all currents that come to the to a node should be equal to zero. Okay, so let's sum them up. There is there is this current that goes to this resistor R, which is easily just uh, as you can see, we have uh, just zero on one side and negative VI on the other side. So I can just say, if I go back to the black color here, so I get negative VI divided by resistor R. That's the current. So uh, maybe I name these currents so that it become easier for reference. Maybe I do that. So this is I1. Another current that we have is I2. Then we have I3. Uh, of course, no current can go or come out of the input terminal of ideal op amp because or practical because it has practically infin infinite Im input impedance. Now we have I four, and finally we have I five. So that's it. There is no other connection to the, this node. So there are there are five currents that we need to take into account. Uh, so what I'm going to write as maybe a good bridge here is I'm going to write it means I one plus I two plus I3 plus I4 plus I5 should be equal to zero. That's the meaning of KCL. Okay, so let's substitute for these currents. First one, I1. As I just said, it's negative VI over negative VI over R. Okay, so let's uh, substitute for I2. That's not difficult. You can see that there is the voltage of V out over potentiometer of uh, R over gamma. So it just simply V out over 1 over gamma. Sorry, R over gamma. I'm just trying to make sure that there is enough space here. Okay, good. Now, let's move out to, so I2 done. Uh, what about I3? Okay, I3 is not difficult again because on one side of this cap we have, we have um, 0 volt so that's on the left side. On the right side, we have R square, C square, uh, S square, V out. So basically, the voltage of the cap uh, end up to be just uh, R square, C square, S square, V out minus zero, which is this zero, which I, I'm not going to write. But then divide by impedance of cap one over C S plus. For I4, we have, again, not a difficult situation because that's the current of this potentiometer. So what I'm going to write is the plus minus, which is simply plus minus R square C square S square V out, divide by the poten resistance of potentiometer. So R square C square S square V out, divide by just R over alpha. And the last current, I5, is simply the current that is going through this potentiometer, which is not difficult because it has plus minus v VI and then divide by the value of potentiometer. So I'm going to exactly do that. It, and VI is what we found here. So I'm going to just say RCS V out divide by the resistor, which is R over beta. And we should set the whole thing equal to zero. So, okay. So just do one last uh, uh, cleanup, and we should be done. So in this circuit, or in this equation that we just found, if I <coughs> multiply um, all the um, all side both side of this equation by R, then clean up, then I get what I want. So obviously, I get. Um, just cleaning up, you can see that here, 
over this one. CS goes to the numerator, give us the third order uh, of uh, CS, and then R goes also to numerator, give us R to the power 3. So we'll, we'll get R cube, so let me put it this way, we would get RC cube, and then we get S cube V out, that's for this component. Now for the next component, what I get if I shift the whole thing as well a little bit so that we are not stretched for the space, I'm going to put it here. Okay, so for the next component, I I'm going to focus on this one. So you can see that this R cancel out with this R because we are multiplying uh, F all side of the equation by R. And uh, alpha goes to numerator. So we get plus alpha RC squared. And then we get S squared V out. Again, V out is just the S domain function here. And plus, uh, for the next component, this one, uh, again, R ca is, is disappearing because we're multiplying by R. And then beta goes to numerator. So we're going to get beta R C S V out. And finally, for the uh, last component related to V out, we're going to get this one, which, again, because of multiplying by R, R goes away, gamma goes to numerator, so we get gamma V out, and we can move this to the right side of equation from the left side. So as a result, the negative sign disappear, so equal to VI. And that's exactly what we were chasing for, except that the last is step is setting RC, which we can set. So if uh, we set, for example, RC to 1, which we can do that, um, and if not even, there, there are easy ways to just uh, set it to whatever proper value and then just uh, simplify the equation to get to what we want. But in this case, let's say set RC to 1 as an example, just, just as an example, there are many possibilities, 1 mega ohm and uh, 1 microfarad. Then uh, this thing disappear, become 1, this thing become 1, this thing become 1, and uh, therefore the equation simply becomes exactly what we wanted. S3 V out plus alpha S squared V out plus beta S V out plus gamma V out is equal to VI. Now these are S domain uh, equation and uh, this is e S domain equation and functions and we know that S to the power three times V out where V out what I'm not showing, V out is S domain function, V out of S. So uh, we know that if now we go from S domain to time domain, so this is S domain equation. So if we transform back to time domain, we know that the impact of S multiplied, multiplying a function becomes a derivative of that function. So it becomes third order derivative of V out uh, with respect to time plus alpha here is S squared so it becomes second order derivative so it's just okay now is better all right so it become alpha second order derivative of V out with respect to time and uh, just S times V out becomes the first derivative of V out with respect to time and finally we have gamma V out equal to VI and that's exactly the final equation we were chasing and uh, that's exactly the relationship between the input and output voltages in this circuit and surely this proves that the V out that appears at the output of this circuit is the solution of the third order differential equation with programmable coefficients gamma, beta and alpha defined by the potentiometer in the circuit that we talked about so yes this is what the circuit is really realizing and we can program the value of alpha beta gamma using these uh, potentiometers that are shown in the circuit. I hope that this example is helpful. Uh, for more examples uh, please uh, take a look at a uh, collection of uh, circuit videos under the uh, circuit playlist. Thanks for watching.